Welcome to Monster Chats, presented by Monster VoIP, where we share the tools, methods, and best practices that business leaders use to build new connections, strengthen relationships, and impact sales and organizations of all shapes and sizes. If you have any questions that come up during today's episode, please text them to 424-378-6966. Please welcome the founder of Monster VoIP, your host, Colin Mitchell. On today's episode, we're going to be talking with Carolyn Bolig of Tandem Consulting and Tandem Giving. Carrie and I are going to be talking about everything from how to scale a side hustle, effective coaching, women's empowerment, and the entrepreneurial mindset. I'm Colin Mitchell, the host of Monster Chats and your founder of Monster Voip. Carolyn, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I look forward. These are all my favorite topics, so... Awesome. Awesome. So Carrie, uh, Carrie's business was initially started as a side hustle uh, and it's allowed her to step away from her full-time corporate career and instead realize her lifelong dream of becoming a full-time parent and part-time entrepreneur. Uh, what started out as a slow and tentative crawl into an adventurous world of entrepreneurship now enables her to run her educational company and speak to tens of thousands of people annually through keynotes in the U.S., Caribbean, Australian, and European market. So, Carrie, tell us a little bit about your journey and your story of like, you know, going from corporate to starting your side hustle, and now it's become probably something much larger than you could have imagined. Yeah, well, thank you for the introduction. And my journey actually started more as a student, actually. So I was very young when I launched my side hustles and I actually studied sociology and women's studies. So not only did I not have a business background, I had no education in business. Um, But for me, it kind of just came down to what's the long-term vision and figuring out what the heck do I want to do with my life? What do I want to create from, Mm -hmm. you know, my pursuit and just being really honest with myself as I was graduating and just realizing like, I'm going to enjoy my teaching career because I love kids, but it's not going to create the means to live a great lifestyle and have an abundance Mm. of choices and be able to really impact people in an exponential way. So I had a gut check pretty young. And at that point, I just became very open-minded and receptive to figuring out other ways to make money and and build something. Um, And for me, I was not a hardcore entrepreneur. I would label myself more of a moderate entrepreneur at that age. Mm -hmm. And and what I mean by that is I I, I didn't have this amazing business tendency or skill set. But at the same time, I knew I didn't want to work for someone else till I was 65, 67. So I was kind of in that gray zone Mm -hmm. of like had a big dream and vision, was willing to work hard, but needed a vehicle and a medium and really in so many ways, the right association and coaching to help me get to where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Um, So I got, I got connected with coaches at that point and really took my evenings and weekends and hustled. Um, leveraged the e-commerce space primarily at that point, um, and then was able to walk out of my teaching career in my mid-20s as a function of compounded good habits in so mm. many ways. Um, and at that point, I said, hey, I would way rather take that extra time, buy back that 40 hours a week, and take that time and reinvest it into other people who are in a similar position as I was. Um, and also got to pursue other hobbies and dreams. Um, at that point, I didn't have children, so got to do a lot of cool traveling, and I'm really into music and spending time with my family. So just creating that extra space in my life to really pursue the things that were most important to me. Um, but it came with like intense focus and working really hard to be able to create that dynamic and lifestyle first. So I like to be very candid and real about the level of work it took to be able to replace Mm. my full-time income. And oftentimes I think in the 21st century, people start the journey wide-eyed and naive. And I don't like to completely crush that, but I like to at least be really open about the level of work ethics and focus and resiliency that it's really going to take to be able to create something significant. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Let's, let's spend a little time on that. But before we do that, I want to go back for a second. Right. So tell me like, walk us through like, what was the first, you know, side hustle that you had going? Like, how did you get into that? Right. And I like, I really like the authentic 
uh, you know, part of like, just being honest with like, you didn't want to, you know, work the long hours in the corporate world. And you, you know, kind of just thought, Hey, I'll have a side business that'll give me the means to live the way I want to. But your main focus and priority was like being, you know, with your family and your kids, which mm. I think is a really hard reality for a lot of people to may maybe struggle with like which way to go. Um, yeah. so walk us through like when you s kind of realized that and got that gut check and then like, what was the first, you know, business or client that you got or side hustle? Yeah. So a lot of people in the 21st century are still thinking I need a big, viable, scalable idea mm -hmm. and I need to build something from scratch with my bare hands. That was not me. Again, I was not that hardcore at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so I realized I had to leverage some systems that were already in place. And there's so many different systems, like franchising would be a good example, mm -hmm. affiliate marketing, um, building out an agency, network marketing. There's so many different existing platforms that people can leverage. So that was really the direction that I went. And in so many ways, I didn't really care what the medium was for my first couple businesses. That was kind of like an irrelevant detail. It was more what's an efficient and effective way to learn how to scale a business mm -hmm. and also develop skills because I had very few at the time. So it more became what's, what's an effective medium to do that and who mm -hmm. is willing to teach me because mm -hmm. a lot of people are focused on the what and that's fair, mm -hmm. but we focus first on the why, mm -hmm. then on the who, and then on the what. So... It, it, it sounds like you were more in it for the experience of like for the experience for the growth and for where it was going to take me for the, mm -hmm. the results it was going to yield. Right. Um, I think in this day and age, a lot of people believe, Hey, I have to make my business, my passion. And mm -hmm. that's totally fair. There's nothing wrong with that approach, but I would say we went a little counterculture and said, we don't have to be passionate about our first business. Like I'm not passionate about e-commerce. What I'm passionate about is being able to, you know, have that choice and that time and that freedom to then go chase my actual passions. And like, mm -hmm. I could give you the example of photography. I graduated school. I was thinking about, you know, do I go back to school and get another four year degree in photography, go into about a hundred K in student debt to do that so that I could potentially maybe possibly build a photography business and hopefully make revenue and net profit from doing it. And luckily my husband, who's a risk analyst, like the most hardcore analytic you'll ever meet, especially fiscally, he said, do you really think that that's gonna make you happy? That like needing to run a photography business to put food on the table is actually what you want in life. And I'm so glad I had met him right around that juncture because it mm. really did make me pause and say, you know, you're right. Like maybe my passion of taking beautiful photos and traveling isn't what I need to be my means to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. And so but, again, we went with efficiency and then we converted to, you know, being able to do those passions more out of the love and joy of it versus you know, needing to make it work and being really emotionally attached to the idea of it working and being viable. Mm. And I, I love how he phrased that question, right? Because it kind of gave you the space to come to that realization on your own, right? Totally. Yeah. yeah. And we were just dating at that point. So I think it was more just like kind of looking out for me, right? And as coaches now, that's a big thing that we we coach people on is just how to build a good foundation in life, how to make good choices, especially because we work with people who aren't full-time hardcore entrepreneurs. They're side hustlers. They're people that are making career choices and really trying to set up their life in a way that would support building something additionally in a way that, you know, progressively could be significant long-term. So, mm -hmm. so much of that is like building a sound foundation. So people actually have something to build upon. Mm. So, so walk me through like when your side hustle became more of a full-time hustle. It was exciting. It was really exciting. And that was the, the goal and the hope for sure. But I don't know that I, I mean, I must've believed it on a certain level. Otherwise I wouldn't have worked so hard to create it, but it was really a dream come true to be able to create that dynamic. And, you know, I think about the average retirement age, I was able to to beat that by like four decades in so many ways. 
And it's not retiring from life, right? But it's it's scaling out of something that I didn't own to free up time to really invest into something that I could own and control and that operated under my vision and under my banner. And that was that was really important to me after I captured that deeper belief and confidence. Mm. Okay, so just walk me through like when you left your job and, and, and when you went all in on your business and, 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 you know, kind of walk us through those moments. Yeah. Well, at that point I was living down in St. Louis. So I kind of made the transition. Um, I was living down in St. Louis cause that's where Craig was living and really just had to reassess like, what am I going to do with all this extra time now? Right. Mm-hmm. And figuring out what are the most important ways that I can pay it forward and like scale in a different way and at, at a different speed. Mm -hmm. And I would say I just doubled down on the work in so many ways because I didn't have kids at that point, right? And the goal wasn't to just go chill out on the beach. It was to really make those good investments and take it to the next level. And then, you know, Craig and I were married at that point. So then the goal was, well, how do we help Craig be able to make that same choice at some point? Mm -hmm. And, you know, walking out of a teaching career, that's a different ball game than a very strong professional commercial banking career. So mm. that was a bigger climb for us, but that really became the rallying cry, the battle cry for our yeah. family to be able to do that. So, right, right. So that was like almost the why you were kind of testing it out and seeing if you could make it work to kind mm-hmm. of create the process and lay the groundwork for him to do the same. Yeah. Yep. And then he was able to do that um, about four years ago now. This summer, my son's birthday is the day that Craig was able to make that decision. So it's kind of a significant day for the family. Yeah. What a nice day to, you know, Um, day to celebrate, you know, two uh, great things. Um, So, and I think you, you mentioned it early on, right? Because a lot of people have this fantasy of entrepreneurship, like it's this rainbows and, 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 you know, you're going to have these fancy cars and life is amazing. And let's talk about the hard work, right? Cause you said, cause when you made that leap, right, that's when the hard work started. That's when you really got to work and doubled down on your efforts to like really make it work. So let's talk about that. Yeah. I mean, entrepreneurship is a tough, tough game and that's why most don't survive. I mean, there's a reason the vast majority of entrepreneurs don't actually succeed and make it. Um, and when we look at the, you know, cash flow quadrant, sure people are familiar with Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant, the line that really separates more linear from ongoing based Mm -hmm. income, people think of that as like a really thin, flimsy line. It's thick. Mm. It's not easy to traverse, especially if people's primary sphere of influence are all employee minded or self-employee minded. And, and it's not that one is better than the other. It's just they create different outcomes, right? Our mindset, depending on what it's anchored in, creates different choices and outcomes for us. So I just see people, they, they don't necessarily create the right association and support system to effectively make, be able to make that hard transition. And so it just really trips people up in so many ways. And that really goes back to the who for us. Like, who are people mm-hmm. accessing that are helping level up their thinking, that are helping Mm -hmm. them think straight and taking that naivety and turning it into eyes wide open. This is what we've got to do. It might be unconventional, but that's okay if it aligns with what someone's really working to create, but just being really real about that. Um, The bigger, the bigger, the business, the bigger, the problems. Mm -hmm. And emotional resiliency is something that I think I've struggled with in the past. I've really had to grow in that area. I think it's something that a lot of people, even the toughest entrepreneurs, I mean, some days you're like, man, this is really intense. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you're working with people, right? Yeah. Which yeah. most businesses in some regard incorporate human beings and human beings themselves bring a lot of emotion and complexity to the table. So learning how to navigate that effectively is really, really important. And unfortunately, I don't think we're taught that in traditional education. Um, Mm. And I had a great education, like I'm all about my college experience, and the academic um, pursuit that I followed, but I didn't learn you know, emotional durability and Mm. growth mindset. You know, there's a Mm -hmm. lot of things that I didn't learn that I feel like 
really the space where I grew is entrepreneurship. So we're, we're firm believers that entrepreneurship is really an unparalleled space for people to personally develop and really grow leadership skills. So, mm, yeah, no, tell me, you know, you, so you started your business so that you could have more time for your family mm-hmm. and to like kind of pursue your, your passions. Right. So do you have like certain boundaries of like not taking on too much or cause most people think they want to start their business and it's like, I just want to scale it really fast, really big. And your goals were a little bit different, right? So how do you balance that or create boundaries around what you allow yourself to do for your business where it doesn't start to chip away at that family time or pursuing your passions? Yeah, I think that's a hard thing for any business owner because it gets into your heart, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you run a business, it is your heart in so many ways. So I think I think that's tricky. I, I personally see balance as a little bit of a unicorn, um, <laughs> especially with young kids. It's yeah. it's tough. And I don't think I've perfected that ratio at all. I think every day is different and just kind of honoring myself in the process and just being willing to step back and think, Hey, is this, am I, am I setting my life up in a way that's really anchored in my principles and my values and what's most important to me? And I think if we can lay our head down at night and feel really good about the ratio and proportions of what, where we're investing our livelihood, I think that's a win every day. And again, I don't feel like I've, I've nailed it a hundred percent because it's a moving target. <laughs> yeah. Especially with, especially with young kids, like every day is different, right? So mm-hmm. some days a win, some days it's, uh, you know, just, it's another day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's either a win or it's a lesson on yeah. how to win better the next day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, and now do you tell me a little bit about your coaching and, and kind of your, you know, uh, passion behind like women, you know, empowerment? Yeah. Well, coming from a women's studies and sociology background, my goal very young was just how do I make a difference? How do I empower people that, you know, maybe haven't had the best opportunities or haven't accessed the same resources that maybe I did growing up and just figuring out, you know, where the disadvantages lie and working to create more equality for people in education and opportunity. So with our coaching, you know, we have our consulting company, um, Tandem Consulting. We also started our first nonprofit this last year, which is exciting. So Tandem Giving. Um, And just really figuring out how can we actually educate and empower people and not just give people skills and tools, but the deeper mindset. Mm Mm-hmm. Because if people have the mindset, they can convert that into life set, really setting up their life to support the mindset and the goals and the pursuit that they're in. So we, we coach on a lot of different topics, leadership, executive presence, you know, learning how to manage finances better, um, learning how to scale side hustles and actually build something incrementally outside of a career, mm-hmm. relationships. Uh, we do a lot with communication skills and teaching people how to be stronger communicators. Um, so there's a lot of different areas that we coach in. But again, I'd say the target market is more that moderate entrepreneur you know, frequently we have people come to us, they're like, I have this startup and this startup. And it's like, we're not your people. (laughs) We can give you some basic guidance and suggestions and hopefully refer you to somebody else. But if somebody, if someone has like an existing business, they're scaling, we're not necessarily the ideal coaches for them, but it's more Mm -hmm. of that person who's got the ambition, the work ethic, and they just need support and a vehicle. And that's really what we help provide for people when we coach Mm -hmm. them. Okay. And so are you guys mostly working with women? Uh, we work with a huge range. Yeah. We work with men, women. We work with people of pretty much all, all age groups and demographics. Um, even in our U.S. business, we probably have about 30 countries and cultures represented. Wow. Um, so we work with a very diverse range of people, which again, with my background, that was like the biggest blessing is mm. to really earn that diversity in my life because we don't live in the most diverse city or state. Um, but to be able to really lock arms and, and create lifelong friendships with people from all over the world, different religions, different um, career paths and beliefs, that's just been like one of the most beautiful experiences for me to be able to create my inner circle with that level of um, uniqueness and diversity. So. 
Wow, that's incredible. So let's let's go back for a second because you kind of dropped a bomb. You also started a nonprofit. So yeah. tell me about that. Tell me about the mission. Tell me about your passion. You know, tell us more about, you know, what the nonprofit's all about. Yeah. So we talk a lot about creating ongoing income, right? Um, we took it a step further and we said, hey, let's let's start a nonprofit with the goal of building it into an endowment fund as we build mm. up the fund and really then take the interest on that fund and have more perpetual ongoing residual giving. Mm. And so that was really the vision. And what we've done is we've vetted some not existing nonprofit organizations. And the first that we partnered with was actually an organization that focuses on children who are a little bit older in the adoption process that don't typically get adopted, unfortunately, because of their age. And oftentimes get put into pretty sad, unfortunate circumstances once they get kicked out of the, or out of orphanages or, you know, Mm -hmm. the system that they're in. So really raising funds to help increase the likelihood of them actually finding families. So that's been one of the first areas that we've really started to work to raise funds. Um, And we're just getting started. We're just warming up. I, I think it will definitely be our first nonprofit. The vision is big and there's a lot of other causes that are really near and dear to our heart. Um, but it's been very exciting to be able to put that milestone in place because for years that was the goal is like, how do we create enough choice and lifestyle and, and influence and leadership that then we can really go past that on and create a much bigger splash um, than we could have in our careers. And so um, that, that's been a big point for us. And now we're writing a book. Uh, we got a publishing deal for a book that we're writing. So again, just another medium to just be able to hopefully spread the message and the mindset and the life set to people who are young in their entrepreneurial journey and not young in age, but like young in the, in the lifespan of being an entrepreneur and hopefully just equip people with, with better thinking and, and stronger tools to be able to make it a successful journey. So yeah. these have been fun, fun passion projects for us that we've really rolled out in 2020 and probably the book in 2021. Um, and that's, that's just a good feeling of fulfillment because I, I think a lot of people think they're chasing money, but at the end of the day are actually more chasing significance mm-hmm. and fulfillment. So that is incredible. Wow. Congratulations on the book deal. Um, and the nonprofit sounds like you guys are doing some amazing things. Um, I don't know how you do it all. One, one foot in front of the other. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so I mean, okay. So the ideal people that you work with are typically people that are kind of like on the fence, maybe working, you know, wanting to kind of start a side hustle or, or get it, you know, trying to, so trying to foster that, entrepreneurial mindset to kind of give them the courage to take that leap, right? Yeah, for sure. People that are doing well in their career, the career's not bad. They're doing well, but it's like not, it's not everything, right? They want to do Mm -hmm. something, pursue something outside of that. And they need people to help them. And they also need, need vehicles and systems to be able to actually utilize similar to like we, we did when we were early on in our journey with our first businesses. So Right. That, that's incredible because I mean, basically that's what you did, right? So you have the experience of that and now you get to kind of give back and teach more people that are, you know, doing well, always wanted to kind of do something themselves, but just never could get that, you know, push to do it. And mm-hmm. kind of you have made maybe a lot of the mistakes and things like that already for them. So they don't oh, have yeah. to. <laughs> a lot of mistakes, pal. <laughs> And, and that's the fun part, like even writing the book, it's not like theories we have to come up with. It's like, this is what we did. Mm-hmm. This is what we've lived. And that's actually made the writing process and the coaching process just fairly smooth um, because we're really just sharing from our own story and experience. So That's awesome. Well, Carrie, thanks so much for coming on the show today. We're, we're just about out of time, um, but welcome to the Monster Chats community. Really appreciate you taking time to speak with me today. Um, just before we let you go, please tell us where people can find you, where they can connect with you, if they have questions, if they want to learn about the nonprofit or your, your business, um, just let them know where they can find you at. Yeah, thank you. Well, I'm definitely very present on LinkedIn. So I would say that would be the best space to find me. Hit me up on LinkedIn. It'd be fun to meet some of you and 
we're big believers in just supporting people wherever they're at in their journey. So if we can be of help or cheerlead anybody, we're, mm-hmm. we're always up for that. And I really appreciate you having me on. It was a good conversation. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much. So if you're listening to the podcast, please subscribe, share with your friends and we are listening. If you have feedback, we want to hear from you and thanks so much for listening today. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of Monster Chats presented by Monster Voip, where we share the tools, methods, and best practices that business leaders use to build new connections, strengthen relationships, and impact sales and organizations of all shapes and sizes. If you have any questions from today's show and want to reach us directly, please text your question to 424-378-6966.